I'm Han Bin Liu from Red Hat. I'm working in the network service team. And today we will talk about um, how to start uh, programming with FDP. Okay. So uh, here's the agenda. First, we will talk about uh, what and why why use FDP. And then we will write a small program. We will extend the program and uh, use the BPF maps. At the last, we will load the BPF program with BPPF. Okay, first, uh, what and why we use FDP? Um, as the time is limit, uh, we will go to go through this part uh, quickly. So, what's FDP? FDP is a Express Data Pass is a network feature based on eBPF. It's very to you very easy to use because we can com comply it once and load it on multi kernels without recomplying. And uh, it's also very fast as we can operate on package before it's being converted to SKB and go through the whole network stack. Okay, now let's see how to write a Hello World program. The first two lines is um, uh, helper functions. It pro provides the helper functions. And then the next is the section helper. Is this is used to place a section in ELF file after complying. Uh, here we define the section name as uh, SCP job. The next line is the main function in this section. The name is FTP job program. Uh, it has only one parameter, but we don't use it right now. We will talk about it uh, later. Uh, it's on how one line it returns XDP drop, which means we will drop every package we received on the interface. Uh, there's, uh, there's, there are also some other kind of uh, actions like XDP pass or XDP TX, XDP reject. And the last line is the uh, license, license section. Uh, this section is uh, needed as as some helper are uh, accessible only by GPL license license the program. Okay, um, now let's see how to build the object. Um, first, we need to install some dependencies like uh, clone LLVM uh, or libbpf libxdp, and then we we build the object by uh, while well, clone. Uh, with dash g, this will generate uh, debug information, and uh, we need to make the target is BPF uh, source file xdp drop dot c. Output is xdp drop dot o. This is a elf file, and we can also dump dump the object by llvm object obj dump. Uh, as we have complied the object with dash g. It will, uh, we, we can see the disassembled source code. It will uh, return FDB drop. So, built with the dash G is very useful for debug when we only have the object file, but we don't have the source code. Also, with LM of OBG uh, OBG dumps, we can uh, with dash H we can see the section lines like the XD, XDP drop section, the license section, we just defined in, in the example. Okay, now how to load the object? The easiest way to load the XDP object kernel is while well, the IP link. Um, before the test, there's one that don't load it on the default interface because our example will drop every package uh, come uh, come in the interface. So if you load it on default interface, you may get um, uh, internet. Uh, um, you are disconnect with the internet. Okay. Uh, first, we load it with IP link set VTH with module XDP with model XDP generic. There are also some other uh, modules models like uh, XDP driver or XDP offload. Um, but it's only supported by a few drivers. Uh, if you want to testing, you can use XDP generic, which supports by all the drivers. 
and uh, supply the object and the section name. After load, it, it uh, with IP link show, we will show the lines. You can see the lines program FTP with ID one. We can also use BPF to program show to show the uh, program we just load. Another tool is SDP loader. SDP loader schedules also show the uh, show the program we load. Uh, if you want to unload the object, just uh, do IP link set interface with SDP generic off. Um, but we have an uh, rec we recommend that to use SDP loader to load the SDP object because it's the only way uh, Red Hat support. And it's only the way is is the only way uh, we load the multi programs on one interface. So let's see with XDP loader load with module STB. STB means is the same with with the uh, prior in with the example uh, IP link that we use uh, XDP generic. And we also supply the uh, section name, the interface name, and the object file. So with XDP loader status, you can see we load the two XDP programs. The first is XDP dispatcher. It's provided by the XDP loader. The next one, XDP job program, is just is what we write before. Now with IP link show, you can see it only show the first program, um, but the BPF, BPF2 program will show the two programs. First is XDP dispatcher, the second is XDP drop program. Uh, to load to unload the program, just, just type XDP loader unload dash a means all with the interface name. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, it's uh, uh, now we have learned how to write a XDP program and load it to kernel. But uh, this is just a hello world program and meaningless. So let's try a meaningful program. How about we drop some specific packets, like a net filter or IP tables? We we write a program to drop a IPv6 package. Um, first, we need to see uh, the parameter we just set, we just saw uh, the struct XDP MD. Mm. There are two fields we will use today: uh, the data and the data end. As we know, uh, when the driver receives a packet, the data starts from the Ethernet header. So the XDP MD data point to the Ethernet header, and the data end point to the end of the data. Now, uh, now here is the full code. Uh, we we now we need two more header lines. The if either to define the either header and the inlet header. Um, compared to the previous program, we add some, we first we define the data end uh, point to the CTX data end, and the data point to CTX data. Then we define the either header variable eth point to the data, which is, which is the uh, beginning of the data. And then um, we, we, uh, we access the data in the is an uh, header. Uh, we must make sure we don't access the invalid error. We need to check the uh, data plus the size of ETH header is greater than the data end. This check is uh, compulsory by the BPF verifier because we we can't uh, we can't access unauthorized kernel memories. Um, after that, we compare the um, protocol. If it's uh, IPv6, we will drop it. If it's not, we will pass or pass the package. Okay, it's very easy, right? Uh, if you want to drop some other kind of package like IPv6, uh, IPv4, or even TCP, UDP, or or based on the source set, the port number, you can just do the same like this example, and uh, operate the package data based on the uh, network format. So you need to know the network format first. Okay. Um, now, uh, now is that all? No. 
what if we want to communicate with the kernel? Uh, what if we want to count the number we just dropped? Uh, here we will introduce a very important feature, EPBF feature, the maps. Um, BPF maps is uh, are used to share data between the kernel and the user space. We can update the map data in kernel and read it from user space or, or vice versa. Mm, here is an example we, uh, of the new uh, BPF type format defined map. Uh, here we defined a structure, a structure RS count uh, with the section maps. Uh, the the struct type is uh, BPF map type uh, per CPU array. It means we define an, an array on each CPU on the system, and uh, the k is unsigned set to the value is alone. There is only one entry in this in this struct. Uh, there are also uh, some other kind of uh, BPF maps like the hash or array. Uh, this are defined in the Linux kernel. Okay, uh, now let's see the full code. So first we define the uh, the map, and then we define a key. Uh, as we only have one one um, entry, so the key is zero. And um, when we when we get the IPv6 packet, we get the value from the uh, from the map by BPF map lookup element with the uh, with the map name and the key value. We get the we get the value, and uh, if there's the value, we plus one. Now we count the number in the kernel, but um, how do we get the value from user space? Okay, let's see. Uh, first, we build it. Uh, we build it with Silang, and then we. Then load it with the FTP loader, and then we receive some IPv6 packets. Um, with the BPF2 map show, we will show all the maps on uh, we load. You can see the first map is um, uh, a per CPU array with name RX count. This is just the one we uh, we defined in the program. So with BPF map dump with ID 16. Uh, Oh, sorry. Um, yes, and then with the K zero, we can see the on CPU zero, the value is thirteen. And with CPU one, the value is seven. And then after you uh, sum the value, you will get the total values we just we just dropped. Okay. So until now, uh, after build the BPF object. We load it to kernel while XDP loader. Uh, we saw the maps. Uh, we saw the maps while BPL tools. And uh, but what if we want to load the object and show the maps in in sim two? And what if we want to define another output format? We don't use this JSON output output. So we need to write our own user space program to load the object and communicate communicate with kernel. To get the map data, then we then we need to use libbpf and libxdp. Uh, for the detail in this example is a is a very exam, very easy example. Uh, if we if we want to know the detailed usage, you can read it from the GitHub repo. Okay, mm, so here is the uh, the example we use. With libxdp and libbpf. First, uh, first is uh, header header files. Uh, in the example, we use uh, libbpf devil and libxdp devil. Uh, devil. Uh, first, we define the following uh, variables: global, the interface index, and the xdp struct xdp program. And now, let's see the um, uh, main program. Um, uh, as an, as the usage is uh, um, program name plus the interface name, so first we get the interface name and uh, um, get the index of the interface, and then we 
load the XDP object by the libxdp lib by XDP program open file with the file name and the, the section name. We load the pro XDP program. Then we attach the XDP program to the interface with the SDP model SKD. And now we have loaded the uh, program, but we want to get the map data. So we need to find the map ID from the BPF object. So first we need to find the BPF object from XDP project, uh, object. Then we find the map, map FD from the BPF object with the map name RS count. After, after we get the map ID, we call a function named the push state to um, every two seconds to get the status. Now let's see what push state looks like. Uh, in the push state, uh, we will count the um, per CPU number and print out the total dropped package. So first we need to get the CPU numbers uh, by, uh, from libbpf number of possible CPUs. And then we define a, a array called the values array with the uh, max entry CPU number. Then we get the we get the values from the map uh, from the map FD with k zero by BPF map lookup element. After that, we summary the values every two seconds. And we also count the sum in total to get the total number. So at last, we will print out the total package and the um, package per second. OK. So um, before the testing, we need to set the uh, set the limit to unlimited, so we can get enough source resource. Then we build the XDP program. We build the program with GCC. Please note that the XDP program and the objects we showed at the beginning is not user space program. The XDP object is built as an um, ELF file and will be loaded to kernel, while this program is run in user space and uh, is used to load the XDP object and print out the map values, just like we show we show the uh, just like the XDP loader or the BPF tools. And that's why we build it with GCC, um, but the XDP object is built while clone. So now we built it with GCC and with flex uh, LBPF and LXDP. Uh, and the load the, we run the program with the interface name vt one And then after we receive some IPv6 packets, it will print out the total dropped number and the package per second. Okay, so all the example code you could be found in this link. Uh, including the, this slide. 